Hi, I'm Sanjay Majumda. I'm one of the plastics and hand surgery consultants. And today for Medicine in a Nutshell Doc, I thought we'd discuss treatment of Dupatrons. Um, before we discuss the treatment per se, let's talk about the indications. Now, as you know, Dupitrons mainly affects the palm aspect of the hands, the plantar aspect of the feet, and which is uh, less commonly, uh, and quite rarely the penis. Uh, penile Dupitrons is usually treated by the urologist, so we can forget about that. Plantar Dupitrons, you tend to get nodules, contracture is not usually a problem, and the nodules only if they become painful, then you may consider excising them. Uh, the big deal about excising things from the soles of the feet is putting scars which then themselves may become painful. Uh, fortunately, it's not a common um, situation that we have to deal with. So going on to the Dupitrons for the plantar aspect of the hand, sorry, palmar aspect of the hand rather, there, there are two indications. One are painful nodules and the second is contracture of the digits. Now, Painful nodules um, are not because the nodules themselves inherently are tender, but the pain is secondary to the nodules pressing on the surrounding structures, mainly the digital nerves. And patients complain that, oh, it's not painful except when I grasp things, and you can understand why that is. Uh, in this situation, one may consider treating it either with uh, injecting it uh, uh, with a steroid or um, excising. Now, the mainstay is when people get a contracture of the fingers. Um, there is a situation that I commonly face, uh, or not uncommonly face, where GPs send patients with Dupitrons. That's quite um, significant because they say, my GP said my finger wasn't bent enough uh, before for treatment. Uh, and this stems from the tabletop test that um, they described by Houston um, a while ago, which essentially says if you can't put your hand flat on a table because your finger is bent, then it, you've got to consider uh, treatment. I, I don't actually subscribe to that point of view. I think it's it's too broad brush uh, um, really for me. What I like to do is actually discuss with the patient exactly what functional impairment they're getting because of the contracture. And if they have a contracture which is significantly affecting their lifestyle, either at work or recreation, then one must consider the possibility of um, delivering some treatment, uh, obviously, if, if they are fitting up um, for this. Um, you can get people with very mild degree of contracture, but which can be affecting them because of their job, for instance, engineers who may need to put their hands behind refrigerators or machinery, uh, versus patients who have much more um, severe contracture, but are not, not affected because uh, their, their lifestyles are such that it doesn't bother them. Now, what treatment options do we have? There's radiotherapy. Uh, which I must say I have never used or had uh, sent a patient for, but for completeness, you've got to discuss it. Radiotherapy um, is supposed to decrease the spread or the, 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 the pace of spread of Dupitrons, possibly by affecting the fibroblasts to slow, them, uh, slow down the deposition of collagen, which, as you know, is what Dupitrons uh, tissue is. The, the next non-operative management treatment is using collagenase, and this collagenase uh, is from the Clostridium histolyticum um, and it comes under the brand name Zyapex. It is being more widely used um, and indeed some, some um, the teams use them as their first uh, port of call. Um, collagenase works at principle of injecting the collagenase into the cords, um, leaving that alone for 24 to 48 hours and then the patient goes back to the um, the surgeon where the fingers are then straightened uh, and the, because the collagen is acted on the collagen the the cords snap open much like frayed ends of a rope um, and it's supposed to give a decent result um, there are some complications using this collagenase and most of them are quite minor in terms of uh, bruising pain and some skin tears uh, but there have been a few incidents of um, tendon rupture. Uh, whilst the incident tendon rupture is quite low, it's something that one has to mention obviously in any consent form. Now the the mainstay of uh, treatment for Dupitrons in, in this country at the present time is surgery. 
uh, and there are multiple surgical techniques. So we've got fasciotomy, which is essentially just dividing the cord, and one can do that with a needle uh, or a knife. And the way it's done with the, um, with the needle is that the finger is straightened uh, forcefully while the cord is then um, under tension like a guitar string and you use the needle uh, to move it on the cord until the cord snaps. Um, if uh, one wants to do it under a bit more direct vision, so to reduce the risk of injury to surrounding nerves, uh, open fasciotomy through a small incision is something one can do. Uh, fasciectomy is a more common procedure and fasciectomy can divide into segmental which is um, making an incision and taking a segment about a centimeter or so of the dupatrons and because you're taking more tissue out than in a fasciotomy where you're not taking tissue out at all but just dividing it it uh, takes longer for any recurrence to occur the most common procedure is um, a regional um, fasciectomy uh, which is also known as a limited or selective fasciectomy, which is essentially uh, making cuts on the palm and the affected digit, uh, lifting the skin flaps, making sure the neurovascular bundles are protected, and then excising all the diseased um, uh, uh, cords, which is a Dupuytren's tissue. Um, now, it is quite important to understand that the main part of this operation is not the removal of the Dupuytren's tissue, but the protection and the safe dissection of the neurovascular bundles. And I say that because once the neurovascular bundles have been um, safely dissected out, the Dupuytren's tissue is quite easy then to just excise, really. Okay, uh, radical fasciectomy is not really done. It's just more historical where all the fascia is removed, but it causes a lot of scarring. Uh, so we'll, we'll uh, put that in the history books. The incisions that one uses for um, uh, fasciectomy is the Skoog incision, and uh, most commonly, and the Skoog incision is essentially a, a straight line going down the, uh, the mid uh, part of the finger and then going on to the palm. I prefer to do the straight line on to the proximal digital crease and then do a zigzag because I think sometimes the straight line uh, when it heals up can cause a little bit of tightness and is uncomfortable for some patient and uh, doing Z plasties on the hand on the palm aspect of the hand I think is is not as easy because the skin is a bit thicker once you have excised your Dupuytrens then you're left with this straight line incision crossing your joint creases which is of course not optimal and also you have some shortening of skin because your finger had been bent so a z plasty is then put in either centered on the crease or some people like to center it on the um, in the mid part of the proximal phalanx whichever you do you end up with a change in direction of the scar and lengthening of the scar so that it addresses two things in one if the um, if the thing is a high uh, chance of recurrence, like on the little finger, for instance, or the, the ring finger, some people choose to do a fasciectomy, and then instead of doing Z-plasties, put in a full thickness skin graft to act as a fire break. And the reason uh, behind this is that Dupuytren's tissue obviously goes on to the derm dermal part of the skin, and by introducing dermis from another part of the body where there is no Dupuytren's tissue, it causes the fire break. Um, uh, whether we do that for primary operations or not, it tends to go about swings and roundabouts a little bit, really. Uh, there's a Makash open uh, palm technique as well, which is transverse incision in the palm and then excising your Dupuytren's tissue, leaving the incision open, not stitching it, not putting skin grafts on it, uh, to allow a more easy uh, physiotherapy. The incision tends to heal up quite nicely. Um, and some people have opt to use that. In incidents where you have recurrence disease or quite heavy involvement of the dermis, you have to do have the dermatofasciectomy, which is taking the skin and the fascia, at which point you may need to put um, the local flap or more commonly a full thickness skin graft, um, as we discussed. When you're doing a recurrent um, or redo uh, Dupuytren's uh, operation, a dermatofasciectomy, for recurrent disease, always be aware 
and make sure that the the nerves uh, haven't been injured previous in the previous operation because what you're really worried about is the vascularity of the digits because if the nerves have been injured have the digital um, vessel been injured as well as a rule of thumb before you do any dupitrons operation always document the pre-operative state of the um, sensibility of the digit um, now finally what are the complications of surgery well there's bleeding hematoma infection injury to nerves causing numbness injury to vessels causing loss of digit wound dehiscence loss of skin grafts loss of skin flaps lumpy or painful scars stiff digit stiff hand persistence of the um, wound uh, sorry the dupitrons contracture that's if the dupitrons has been removed but the joint itself you're unable to straighten uh, and then you've got to decide mm, whether we need to do a joint release or not but that's beyond the scope of this talk obviously recurrence of the disease um, and crps so that uh, is treatment of dupitrons in a nutshell